sent me uh, I think it was a text with um, a gentleman who came here to preach a lawn mowing, the man that um, has the lawn mowing company. The what? The lawn mow. mow. The man who do, does the grass. He, I think he came here to preach one Sunday or something. And I sent you a text? I think so, some time ago. I saw it came through a uh, I don't remember if it's you or somebody else, but somebody sent me it. Oh. And I deleted it, so I'm looking for it now. I don't remember. Uh, you need the number for the guy who mowed our grass? Yeah. 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 In the house? Yes. Chester, yes. yeah. I can give you his number. Okay. Maybe that, I don't know if that's what it I think you, it was you who sent it. I saw it. And there's another young man that does that that came to speak. Yeah, he, yeah. That's when you want the one that came to speak. No, anyone, anyone. Okay. The uh, cheapest one. <laughs> that'd probably be Chester. But Chester is, um, uh, has taken his business up to uh, dealing with dump trucks. So I'm, I think he's trying to minimize how many yards he's actually going to be doing. So, but you call and ask him. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're here on our, um, our live for our live. Thank you guys for joining us. Praise God. We've been talking about the conquest of the wealthy place. The conquest of the wealthy place. I think it's a, it's a very rich conversation. We've been dealing with the layers within uh, a century changing our mind, right? We think about how rich that is, changing our mind. And then the uh, specifically you know, one of the things that I've been really driving driving home uh, in these last few weeks is what, that we're not looking for a wealthy place, we are the wealthy place, right? So, amen? Amen. Okay, how you doing? They, they sleep today, you're gonna come with me, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> amen. But, but one of the things that we find out uh, in real life is there are certain things within us Right, that that hinders us from number one seeing ourselves properly. Right, number two functioning from our truth properly. Right, yes, amen. Yes, yes, amen. You know, uh, and, and this this is heavy. So, one thing that we have to realize is that circumstances has its own weight. Amen. Right. Now, now here's the here's the other part about it that becomes extremely powerful for the spiritual person. Circumstance has its own weight, but how that affects you is going to be based upon and dependent upon how emotionally healthy you are, okay. right? How whole, how sound yeah. you are. Mm -hmm. You see, but if you're not, you know, uh, are there some deficits in that emotional health? Are there some deficits? In your soundness and your wholeness, praise God, then those circumstances are going to weigh against you even more. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's huge, right? One of the big pictures of, of our, our last conversation, our last week's conversation, I should say, we, we used the imagery uh, of, of the wall of Jericho, right? right? Yeah. And this becomes a picture of some of our emotional deficits, yes, right? Yes. Unresolved trauma, uh, you know, different things that we have going on. The reason why the wall is so powerful is because we don't realize the defenses that we've set up, mm -hmm. right? And I know this basic stuff, we're just framing where we're going today, but we don't realize, a lot of times we don't realize how uh, how many defenses we set, we've set up, right? Mm -hmm. We don't realize that our pull to want to wear that mask is a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that to keep people from getting into our, our, our vulnerable spot, to keep people from getting into our, into our death, praise God, we've set up walls. Barriers, yeah. right? We see how powerful that really is. Yes. Now this 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 becomes important for us to think through because 
and, and I've said these things so many times that I think it's worth saying one more time right here. Most of us don't realize how we're keeping ourselves from where we say we want to go. So I say that. Amen. Right? Um, and the layers in that, even for myself, here recently, I came here to pray, uh, I want to say it was Tuesday, maybe Monday. I think it was Monday or Tuesday, whatever. Uh, and, I was, and I was in here praying, praise God. And, and in my spirit, the thing was, it's time for action. Right, I've been planning. I've been I've been strategizing for years. Mm -hmm. Right, I've been putting things in the place that you know are supposed to collide at one point in time or another. But here, I was in the spirit that it's time for action. Uh, I planned enough. I've strategized enough. Now it's time for movement. Right? Yeah. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> as I'm thinking through that, as I'm praying through that, I start to think about what has kept me from moving. Right, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's powerful. It's extremely powerful. Um, and and I can say this, I can say this, you know, and not be seen some kind of way in here, but I'm really emotionally healthy. Uh, for the for the most part, I'm a very whole individual in my responses, and my reactions, and different things like that. Uh, and the other thing, I'm very comfortable with me at this point in my life. Uh, it has been a real work to get here. It didn't happen overnight. It's been a real work to get here. Amen. Praise God. But I feel pretty good about myself. But as I begin to weigh what has kept me, you know, from, from certain movements, certain activities, that's, that I know the end result. So that's another thing. I don't, I'm not tripping about the end result, right? I, I, I'm promised prosperity. I'm promised, you know, destiny. You, you, you can realize a great destiny. So the, the thing that I, I begin to think about is there's, you know, there's some elements of fear, right. some insecurities. Right, that, these are the things that have kept me from moving b before. Right, <clears throat> I think if we if we really begin to realize that when we're not looking for a wealthy place, but we're actually are the wealthy place, and we start removing the things that are hindering, mm -hmm. right, that's yeah. hindering our sight, yeah. that's hindering our next move. Am I yeah. am I making sense? Yeah. We'll realize just how much we've actually held ourselves up. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Simple, real simple. You can call it deliverance. Um, you can call it liberty, freedom, um, um, in, in real life. Um, um, but most of the time, there's going to be labels. So the title doesn't really matter what you call it. Right? It's going to be the extent of your hunger. Help me over to help you walk through the layers of whatever your process looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah. does, does that make sense? Yes. I think sometimes, and this is, and if y'all disagree with me, you have every right to do, not right to, and we can, we can argue right here. <laughs> Black people, African Americans, colors, <laughs> are very resilient. And because of how resilient we are, praise God, we're high functioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Yeah. That's strong. Yeah. But then it's also extremely weak. Because we're not really available to see our deficits. Am I making sense? Yeah. <clears throat> you have to realize that there has to be an absolute greater than functionality. I'm making sense. I watch a lot of people that reach for success based on information. They're not dealing with any of their emotional deficits. They're not dealing with their, their, their truth in any shape, form, or fashion. They, they determine in their mind that success is based on how much I can accumulate, accomplish, or achieve. Are you with me? And that's where their thought process is at, right? Things they forget, sustainability. See? That's huge. That's, that's so big. Because a lot of times, you can accumulate and you lose just as fast as you accumulate it. Yeah. Right? Because the character that should be in, in place, the, the process that you would have went through to develop the character, 
the process that you would have went through to develop a, a reputable response and reaction, I mean, these, these are huge. Are, are you with me? This, the, the, the back to the, the point. Being available to go through your process, praise God, being available to walk out your deliverance, to really reach for your freedom according to your truth, your freedom according to your truth, your freedom according to your truth. Am I saying that? It's so empowering. It's so empowering that it prepares you beyond even your own expectations. Am I making sense? Yeah. Yeah. This, this, that's my introduction. And we'll get on the, on, on the text. Joshua 6 3 is the scripture reference. Joshua 6 3. It reads on this wise. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. All you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you, you shall do six days. First thing that points out is a process, right? Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. And then it points out that there are instructions to the process. Oh, that's huge. See? Well, a lot of people don't realize that this is the advantage. This is the advantage of actually dealing with counseling and therapy. You have someone that can help you walk through the process with information. Am I, am I making sense how powerful that really is? Another thing that, that we see here, it says, it says, all you men of war, right? Yeah. That's huge, right? I don't think most of us realize how big of fighters we actually are. The fact that you made it to this point, <laughs> come on somebody, the fact that you, that you, that you, that you still kicking, Represents the fact that you are you are a soldier, you're a fighter. You can you can you can press. Yeah, hear me. You know how powerful that really is. This is the picture that we should have when we start thinking about the biggest battle we got is against ourselves. Why would I check down when I've stood so? I'm not just saying when you become a uh, a Christian or when you a believer mm -hmm. or whatever. Your war, your spiritual war, mm -hmm. it starts then. Mm -hmm. And if you just think about it, you've been saved for 30 years. You've been warring for 30 years, uh -huh. as a matter of fact. And even before you become a believer, being who you are, being who we are, we've, we had to war just in natural life, Promising. just in life. So that when you put it like that, you think about it. We're fighters. We are warring people. I promise you, we are. So one of the things that um, and, and you came back and said this, and I'll add to this: your spiritual battle started way before you understood the parameters mm -hmm. or the rules of engagement. Yes, yes. See, the enemy was trying to take you out when you was a child. True, true. <laughs> I promise you. He was, he was trying to create the dynamics in your childhood to silence your voice in your adulthood. Ain't that heavy? Yeah. And you had no idea that you were in a battle. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's how, that's how weighty this really is. Uh, because here's the truth. You're spiritual even when you're born. You just don't know. Mm, yeah. See? The moment you break the matrix and you come into this realm, you are a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. See how powerful that really becomes? Yes, yes. See, most of us don't know it until we reconcile. Mm -hmm. Until we come back to God, reconcile to God, then that truth that we find in ourselves, in Him, is revealing to us. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Yes. Back to the to this picture. Once you do understand the rules of engagement, you start taking on your truth. That's heavy, though. Yeah. Oh, God, that's so heavy. Because the vast majority of believers, right, and, and, and because of Western theological construct and the ideology that sits in that construct, most people aren't looking for a salvation 
that empowers them and liberates them. True. They're looking for a salvation, an ideal salvation that saves them from damnation. Yes. Yes. Right? Right? <laughs> you know, that, that's huge. That's huge. And their focus then is to stay qualified in that idea. Yes. <laughs> right? So now I need emotional weight to sustain my ideology. Think about some of the parameters, or think about some of the some of the evidences within that emotional weight, right? Think about how we how we've been conditioned to think and feel about uh, 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 idols, images. True. Yeah. Um. It's so it's so much in this. I give you a recent one: the Olympics. There was a mockery. That was yeah. done over the last supper. Last supper. Now the idea that's in our mind of the last supper, and the reason why this mockery makes sense to most of us in the West, is because we have the painting of Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Here's the tragedy. The painting of Leonardo da Vinci is nothing close to what the actual Last supper would have looked like the Christ and the disciples. Right, right. The imagery is all wrong. It, it within itself is a mockery. See? Now we're offended because of a mockery of something that we've never even seen as a mockery or identified with as a mockery. Some people would argue because Leonardo da Vinci was a Christian. <laughs> it's huge. And see, that's their argument. Because Leonardo da Vinci was a Christian, praise God, then it should give some, some justification for his painting yeah. and, why, how, and how we should look at his painting. You see? But at the end of the day, what you're really identifying with is an ideology. Yeah. See? That's why they told him to take people and get this right. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, even, even wealthier than this, here's what a lot of people don't realize is that hist historically speaking, the, the, the point was iconoclasm, right? Yeah. When the East and the West were still connected in, in, in the sense of Catholicism, universal church, praise God, that iconoclasm was voted down at least three or four times in the, in the, in the council when they would come together and vote about ideas. The whole point of it was, as the scripture says, have no images. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's you. Right. The problem was, is that they wanted to take the images and make them look like Europeans. Because they didn't feel like Europeans would accept the true depictions. Mm -hmm. This is how powerful this really is. You see, <laughs> you see how big it really begins to get? You see what I'm saying? But because of the ideology that we've been shaped in, in our Western thought, praise God, now we're offended because you, 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 you're making a mockery of our images. Think, think about how deep this really is because here's what I figured out. People who are really in an intimate relationship with the Most High God ain't tripping. <laughs> can, can care less. That's, that's my whole point. Remember, that's exactly what we talk about, the emotional weight that we have to have to support our ideologies. When I saw it, I'm just like, oh, wow. You know, I did not, re I didn't feel offended. First of all, said, uh, uh, God said, offense will come, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But the scripture also says that he will not be mocked. That's right. You know, so. Well, the, the point of it is, and anybody that, that has been in this group any length of time, You've actually matured past that ideology. Yeah. See, your truth now exists, right, in truth, mm -hmm. not an idea. Mm -hmm. See, this has to exist in pretense. Yeah, I see what you're saying. See, but in true intimacy, you're learning that it has to exist in truth. Mm -hmm. You see, <laughs> you see the difference. See, the, back to my point. You've been designed by God to function, right, a 
certain way according to his sovereignty. Right. You're born into this condition where you've been developed in fallen nature. Right. So the thought process, right, and your functionality is now dependent upon this condition. Mm, See? Reconciling to God says, I need to re-identify myself in my truth. So I understand my strengths, my weaknesses, my gifts, my talent. Am I making sense now? You see? Now this process uh, can be a little arduous. Right? You, do we realize that? I mean, you, you think about this because in the condition of fallen nature, your emotions and your intellect have now both been contaminated by this development. So now imagine, add this to the to the case. Imagine growing up in a society that has taught you to try to live by your emotions. <laughs> you see how you have to defy yourself? You literally have to convince yourself that this is not the truth. And then you have to convince yourself that this is not the truth regularly. It's not a one-time groove. You have to constantly yes. bring yourself back to this. I think all of them make sense. Yes. I find myself in a lot of situations now, my thoughts, even with just my thoughts, <clears throat> and I, I, I've learned to speak it out for myself. This is not my truth. Come on. This is not my truth. Come on. Now just keep, just like forgiveness. Son, you got to say it over and over and over and over. Because there, Debbie, Debbie made a post this morning of uh, Debbie Nimbley. Forgive family made a post this morning about how we're capable of instantaneous, instantaneous forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Soon as something happens, we're capable of forgiving. But it's the thoughts yes. that we have concerning the offense that makes forgiveness hard. Mm -hmm. That's true. Oh, y'all better talk about this. <laughs> That's big all by itself, right? Here, here, let's go here. I don't want to get too far off of our, our conversation. Uh, and it's going to all line up. I just don't want to go too far out there. It take too long to come back. <laughs> when we think about the condition, praise God, there's a bondage, right, first of all, in our ignorance. Because if you don't know who you were designed to be in God's sovereignty, now, and, and you're ignorant of that, now there has to be a process to get back to that truth. Yeah. That's number one, period. Mm -hmm. Number two, what if there have been things that happened in your life to continue to cover your truth? Mm -hmm. What if you grew up in a household, right, where, where, where people had negative conversations concerning your future, mm -hmm. your destiny? Yes. You ugly. You're not smart. You're not talented. You can't do that. See, that's another deficit, right, that you're, that you're falling into based on these words that have been spoken away out. Let me give you another one. Generational curses. You come from a family that perpetuates negativity, not this potential destiny that you have. Right. Let me give you another one. What if you're in an environment where none of your gifts are actually being shaped? Because they've taught you to live survival mode. Instead of purpose for living. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. See all this negative? I got another one. What about, what about growing up in an environment where the conditioning has shaped inferiority? Yeah. See? You know, they'll give you another one. What about, what about uh, 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 untreated post-traumatic slave disorder? Mm -hmm. It's all real now. I'm not making up anything that doesn't exist in most of our realities. This all these are all negatives that you're that you're against before you even come to any sense of the truth. Yeah. Right? Exactly. See how big this really become? Oh, let me add some some other offenses to create some unresolved trauma. Molested at seven years old. Come on, somebody. Yeah. See how big this starts to become? Right? See the weights, how this begins to look. Let's mess around and grow up. Mm -hmm. Now with all this weight, and I get married at first, 
Maybe. Come on, somebody. Dealing with abuse, narcissism. Come on, neglect. Am I talking yet? We divorced. I married a second mate. Same thing, different color. Is it still stuck with people? That's not working out. See? You mess around and got saved somewhere along in there. Been going to church, trying to get a different result, not realizing the result has to change in you. Yes. Yes. See how, see how big this really is? Because the same thing could be happening to somebody who's actually now been empowered by the truth. And their responses and reactions change everything. Am I making sense just yet? Yes. Marked around the wall six times, six days in a row. Praise God. Marked with his instructions, right? Because, because the moment you that you get around that six day and you make that last shot, mm -hmm. the last horn blow, the wall gonna come down. Mm -hmm. Now here goes, y'all ready for this? The wall didn't come down they are make that big. The wall came down so the enemy no longer had a structure against them. They still had to go in and fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Do y'all see how powerful this really is? Yes. Yes. See, what God is telling us is, is that you have to understand your willingness and your availability to deal with this stuff, and the enemy really don't have a power against you. Did you see how big that is? See, let, let, let's, let's just go back in our own thought process and our own reality. You have something? No, no. Uh, just go back in our own reality. Remember some things that you faced that seemed too heavy to deal with. Too hard. You couldn't have imagined ever having to confront this thing. Now in hindsight, you not only confronted it, you defeated it. But do you remember the weight of what it was to try to confront it initially? Yeah, exactly. It felt like a wall was there, didn't it? Mm -hmm. You see how powerful it really is? You see how powerful it really is? Wow. Come on. <clears throat> the first thing that we want to talk about, what is freedom? We mentioned, we mentioned one reality, praise God, in a sense, and I've, I've shown you the deficits that actually have been that's been set against us without even us really, really realizing that all these deficits are there, right? So the first thing I gotta be able to understand is freedom is being able to make it through all of those deficits. Come on, somebody, talk to me, right? Now, now one thing that I always say, praise God, is freedom is not just about what you've been loose from. It's actually what you've been loose to, right? Freedom is about you manifesting your truth. Right? See? So now, I have to realize that it can't just be functionality. It has to be greater. Amen? When I think about what freedom really is, praise God, I think the best way to deal with freedom, praise God, in, in a spiritual sense, is being free to manifest my truth. Right? That can only happen in God. Right? One of the things that we that we mess up quite a bit in, in our in our pictures and understanding of intimacy, praise God, is that we don't know intimacy was designed to produce liberty. Intimacy was designed to produce freedom. So now I gotta realize that intimacy can't be emotionalism. That's why one of our struggles is that we think intimacy is all about emotional. It's not. It's not. Right? Intimacy is about yielding. Right? The truth of the matter is you have to yield to yield the lie to receive the truth. See? See how powerful this is looking come? That's true. See, now this is what makes me available for liberty. Amen? The next thing, the next thing. Why is freedom so important? Right? 
Because you can't fully function, you can't really tap into fulfillment unless you're actually free. Anybody? Do you see how power that really is? Because you were designed for fulfillment. <laughs> right? Sometimes we don't know what that is. Sometimes. Huh? Sometimes we don't know what that is. We—that's real stuff. That's real stuff, right? But each one of us in our pursuit, especially somebody that's actually in the process, you start understanding what's going to be fulfillment for you, right? And most of the time, it's bigger than accomplishment, achievement, or accumulation. <laughs> right. You know, I think about for me, if I were to be completely honest, uh, uh, right now, right now, if I were to try to speak on what is, what would be a picture of success for me, right? And I said a picture of success because I'm already successful. Am I making sense? Yeah. But a picture of a success for me would be some of my some of my books reaching a, a, a significant status as far as people receiving and, and being ministered to from me. Yeah. yeah. You, you follow yeah. me? The, the reality that I know is that, say for instance, Faith identity on uh, motive matters. These game changers. Yes. Like straight up that. And, 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 if, and if the vast majority of our quote unquote believers, uh, especially in, in the West, were to take hold of some of these ideas, it would change everything. Mm -hmm. It would literally change everything. Praise God. That's heavy for me. Because number one, God gave it to me. Like, can I, I mean, can I, can you walk with me in this for just a second? Think about this. Nobody, a nobody from nowhere, and God dropped this level of weight of revelation on me. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that I've done so good to earn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, but, but here's the reality that I figured out. I was born for it. This is how big it starts to get in my thinking now. <laughs> right? Now, now, you can see the potential, right, of, of, of a reformation of thought that changes us out of this religious consciousness into a priority of real intimacy with God and what it was designed to produce. Think about that now. You see? It's, so, it gets past someone trying to be right. You see, it gets past someone trying to prove their point. Yeah. See, it's none of that. <laughs> it's none of, none of those things. That would be the weight for me that would be like, you know, praise God. Something that he wanted to do on the earth in this time through me, I walked it out. Exactly. That's, 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 that's exactly right. And now it has the results that it has. You see? Yeah. That's fulfilled. You feel me? No matter else, whatever else I do, whatever, whatever else I achieve, accumulate, or accomplish can't compare to the weight of fulfillment. Just to show you that I understand after reading that faith identity. <clears throat> I prayed to God and I asked God to just let this thing saturate throughout the world. Keep praying, don't you stop. <laughs> it, not because you are my pastor and you right. wrote the book. Not because who of you are, who you are. It's because what God has spoke to you through mm, and you at this and, and, and the people could just grab a hold to it that that the scripture that said where God said I wish that no man should perish you know I'm serious but on a serious note it would set, help help to save a lot of people what you talking about I mean you just think about how many people are walking this thing out backwards mm -hmm. 
Because we preach the idea of salvation is about getting to heaven. Not manifesting God's truth in the earth. Exactly. You see how big this really becomes? Just as an example, I'm just using that as an example. Why is freedom so important? Praise it. Praise God. Because there's no way that you can fully manifest boundaries. Amen. Right? Yes. Can I give you another one? There's no way that you can walk in authentic relationship disingenuous. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and when you're not free, guess what? You're not your truth. No. You're not functioning in, in the reality of God, for the lack of a better word. I promise you this. A better phrase, but... You know. Here's the other thing. You're, you're not available to give the wealth of your truth. Mm -hmm. Who you are is valuable. It matters to the whole. Even when the whole can't see it, it's still the truth. See, that's all. That's the very reason why you want to walk out your wholeness. See, <laughs> my promise is huge. Job is people. A lot of people don't understand uh, purpose and uh, their reason reason for being on this earth. A lot uh -huh. of people don't understand that, and. Unless you've got an understanding of why you are here, why were you created? You know, why were you placed here? He could have, why weren't you placed on Mars or Jupiter or somewhere? You know, but you were placed on Earth with a purpose. Come on. And, and a lot of people see that as just existing. You know, they don't, they don't, don't really see that. You got something to do. That's right. You got a thing <laughs> to do. It is. You and you've been just like you were chosen for those books that you wrote. I got a, 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 a God chose me for something different. That's right. You know, and it, it, each one, if every person would do walk in their purpose and do what God put them here for, man, this world would truly be in an awesome place. Another thing is you. It's not just doing it, it's also why you're doing it. Right, right. Because the only, motive. only that yeah. is done for God with that. Yes. The motive that's God would actually adds the generational dynamic to whatever you're doing. Exactly. You see how big this really is? That's where, for me, the book Faith, Identity, and Motive Matters, those books collided. That's exactly right. You know, they collided in me and it helped to get me to where I am now. Originally, on purpose, Faith, Identity, and Motive Matters was one book. Okay. See how big that book would have been? I could see that. And how overwhelming that book could have been? Yeah. And then God gave me the wisdom, you know, break them down with their short, yeah. shorter reads. Yeah. And people would be available to actually study through one thought before entering into the next. They'd have time to process. That's exactly that right. Yeah. Um, why is freedom so important? Praise God. One of the things that we forget about the importance of freedom is the generational curse of being broke. I walked the stage for my PhD uh, because my wife told me I needed to. Initially, I didn't care. They could have mailed me the degree. I'm only trying to position myself so that we can start a school one day. That was my whole motive. My whole thought was, you know, I want us to be able to have a reputable school, whatever like that, and I get the degree so that we could so we could do that. I had finished, uh, uh, you know, my, my uh, argument for my dissertation, all this wonderful stuff, and I was like, yeah, they can, they can just mail me. Yeah. And my wife said, nah, you should go to the graduation walk. So the kids can see you walk. Wow. Wow. Right? Yeah. That'll make them, when they get to that point, that's what they want. That's huge, right? Right. It's still a different pattern. Yeah. Right? I didn't necessarily get a chance to see these patterns. Yeah. Right? I come from a family of knuckleheads. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna tell you the truth, real talk. Mm -hmm. uh, alcohol. Poor monitoring, uh, drugs. Um, these are the patterns I saw. 
And I see a lot of people in my family graduate high school, graduate college, none of that type of stuff. And we grew up in the same household. <laughs> <laughs> it's real stuff. And so when my wife said that, I began to understand the wisdom, you know, in, in our opportunity to set new patterns. Mm -hmm. So now think about this. I have three of my younger kids are actually in college. Two of the three are in master's programs. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's so good. good. Mm -hmm. See, your freedom is about breaking generational curses mm -hmm. to create new patterns. Yes. And, and here it is. I'm not saying going to school and getting degrees is the success and, a, you know, above. that's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that my family dynamic was one thing in my childhood, mm -hmm. right? Now for my kids and their childhood, it's an altogether different thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. With a different level of potential mm -hmm. for success. Am I making sense? Yeah. Um, how did this wall get here? Foundational offenses, identifying the roots. That's where it gets, that's where it gets huge, uh, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Do we see, I realize how, how heavy this is. I know a lot of times when I'm, um, uh, I'm, I'm paying attention to people, I'm listening. I'm listening to them and I'm listening with a, a great degree of depth, right? Because I need to hear what's not being said. I need, I need to hear how they talk about certain things and how they glaze over other things. You see, I'm, I'm really listening, right? I, I, you got to be able to hear emotions when they're not actually showing a physical sign of emotion. See how big that really is? In that, then you start being able to trace a trail that started in a position. I, mean, with, I know for myself, I, I, I began to think one day, just walking through my own process of insecurities, unworthiness, right? Because uh, tr truth be told, I've always been very talented, but I never felt very talented. Yeah. Right, I always, I always judge myself, right, uh, as as inadequate. You feel me? Even I, if I knew how to do something, what well, I don't know how to do is as good as them. Yes, yes. Why are you with me? So I'm, I'm talking to God one day, you know, just even going through my own process of like, what is this rooted in? What started this? And as I go back through my story, rejection. Right? Right? First major position of rejection is my own biological father. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He never participated in my life. I don't know any of the variables. All I know is that I'm not good enough to be loved. Mm. Wow. See? I'm not valuable enough, right, for my own father to consider. Think about how, how heavy that really is. See, this is the root of rejection. You know what also come along with rejection all the time? Abandonment. Mm -hmm. They kick it. They, they, they hanging out <laughs> all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So now how you see yourself is going to be predicated upon these offenses. You see? That's a root foundation. Now what winds up happening if this happens so early in your life, in your childhood, Everything else is being built from that foundation. Yes. It's so like the good. onion is being layered. That's exactly, that's exactly <laughs> it's being right. layered. <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly right. I think as you as you deal with ourselves, of course, you have to be available to to go back down through there and see where did this start? How did this enter in? Am I making sense? Yes. This this is so powerful, you know. Um, and then another thing that you have to realize. So say for instance, I've been dealing with some some different tests, trying to figure out what is the cause of, of high blood pressure in my life, right? Uh, originally, the assumption was it was just genetic. Mm -hmm. you, you feel me? But as we're 
as we're, uh, I've, I've had a bout with some medicines, right? And it's been real rough trying to identify and figure this up front, of course, of three years. Probably, I've tried at least 12, 13 different medicines, <laughs> right, right? And still trying to find out the one that actually works right. So they said, we need to take more tests. I think a lot of times, when we, when, we, when we think about our lives, when we think about these root causes, praise God, and, and we think about our behaviors, we think about our responses, our reactions, right? When you see how you, how you act, when you see how you respond, it becomes, you know, a, literally a, a witness, as it were, to, to where did this come from, right? Yeah. Um, another thing is that when you go back through the trace, whatever like that, you can find out how something was actually produced. So said I was, I was dealing with one young man who was dealing with, uh, with homosexuality. Praise God. And so as we pulled back through his experiences, his history, he wasn't molested. So now that tells me that didn't something physically happen to you, something mentally yeah. Yeah. must have happened. So we go back through the story again, a little bit more, whatever I didn't realize, oh, there was, there was an auntie that created a pattern. You see? And now his brain starts thinking to live out his pattern. Yes. Yes. That's how this really is. Yes. You feel me? See, yes. going back through there would give you a determination of where something happened. So here's my, my wisdom for him was, well, here's the reality. If you wield yourself into this, you can wield your way out. Yeah. See how powerful that really becomes? You see? And that's where a lot of people miss it. You know, because it, it would be very different if this happened based on a molestation. Because yeah. now you got physical and psychological problems solved. Right. You see? But it was probably based on those things that were spoken. Those I, things that, that that settled in his mind. Right. You know, because when you were saying that, I was uh, just seeing, because there was a lot of things that was from my auntie that mm -hmm. was spoken. And, uh, it's like every time when I get when I start to go back <clears throat> and I, I'm pr trying to process through this thing and I mm -hmm. so I keep going back to to that to her to the things that she the, uh, the things that caused me to feel inadequate the things mm -hmm. that feel caused me to feel like I'm not I wouldn't I'm not good enough or I can't do good enough and it was those things that she spoke to me. They, they entered my mind, and I'm, I'm going right. six, seven years old, maybe eight, and all those things entered my Come mind. On. And I can even remember my feelings. That's the best deed. Come on. That I can even remember the way I felt whenever she would speak those things to do me, and you, they're doing it over and over and over again. And those things become a, a mental. That's right. It just start festering in your brain. That's right. You know, and, well, and that's something hard to work a, through. It becomes permanent. Yeah. So now, when other things come in, you're weighing against this permanent fixture. What someone said to you, yes. you know, I said about you, or, or you declared over you. You thought that would make sense. In this particular case, the young man, it wasn't necessarily something negative. He had an auntie that he looked up to. You see yeah. how easy that can happen? You, you feel me? And, and, and that ain't complicated in real life. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, because in his, in his formative or developmental years, he just didn't have a contrasting picture. Mm -hmm. He didn't have anything else to say, well, you can look up to her for this, but this is who you are. Right. Yeah. Am I making sense? But anyway, you're absolutely right. When we think about how these walls get here, that's that is a beautiful picture. You stupid, you ugly, you dumb, you ain't got no sense to get this right. What's wrong with you? you There's no things spoken. Yes. Now guess what's happening to your subconscious thought? Take it on. Come on, somebody. Yeah, when Are you with me? You look in the mirror. I'm so ugly. I promise you this. Or you make a little mistake. I'm so stupid. Come on. Yeah. And it just grows. If you don't have somebody to help you in your life, or if you don't know how to cut that thing off or cut that thing out or whatever, 
you know. Amen. My mind, now, Mother Jean, and she says some negative things to us, but nothing like that. But she wasn't going to let nobody else say that crazy <laughs> to us. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you have an ugly boy said, don't you call my boy ugly. <laughs> you know, you know, you, know right? you beautiful, you know what I mean? I, I, I promise, that was real talk. You wasn't going to call her stupid. <laughs> Not around her. She wouldn't have none of them games. <laughs> that's with a lot of mothers, huh? You, huh? I said, that's with a lot of mothers. You can't, you can't, you know. You got to block know. that stuff. Yes. You know, I always think about this meme that just stays in my, stays in my mind. It says, don't let the, uh, don't let the family that hurt you hurt your family. Yeah. That's so powerful. That's good. That's it's like good. real talk. Now, a lot of people approach it in the wrong way sometimes because people become very anti family. No, you don't have to be anti family. You just have to operate in wisdom. Yes. You, yes. you, 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 you follow me like thinking about back to the same example of these negative words being spoken of us. Some, 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 some people come from very negative environments. Right. That was the idea all the time, everywhere, was no different. You, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? People operating in what, what was said over them, and they doing the same. You know, we go out and say, yes. but some people have uh, mothers, daddies that grew up out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, they have a different picture. They knew how it affected them. So I'm not going to let the same thing happen to my yes. kids. Yes, yes. See, and, and it's just as simple as refuting these moments, mm -hmm. casting them down in the moment. We're not going to let this take root at all in your thinking. Mm -hmm. now, am I making sense? Yes. This, um, um, this becomes powerful. First of all, to determine where the wall came from, where the foundations are, praise God. Now, that, now that to determine, it is a wall. It's hindering you. See, this, this takes your, your own uh, 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 self-examination. You have to think. In your own reality, where did this come from? You know what I'm so I'm in a moment. I'm sitting, sitting in an environment, getting ready for an interview. I'm getting interviewed for a job, praise God, and I'm sitting there waiting for them to call me back, and, and I'm nervous. Yeah. Right? Now I'm thinking about why am I nervous? Mm -hmm. See? That, that's the way. But then why am I nervous? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I anxiety? Am, am, am I anxious? You see? Now come up, some of it could be. I really need a job. I need this to come through. Yeah. But a lot of times, most of it is tied to something. Mm -hmm. Am I, I making yeah. sense? Yeah. Think about you, you know, why did me and such and such not work out? I really like this. Yeah. Yeah. Why was my response? Because so a lot of times we get so so tied in the victimization that we're not honest with ourselves. We can only see ourselves as the victim. We don't see ourselves as the villain. Mm -hmm. You see? But you ain't gonna really find out who you are until you can see yourself from both perspectives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be able to look at yourself and say, why was my response like this? Why did I talk to him like that? Why did I, I, I why was I held up? Why was I, you know, unavailable right for real intimacy? Come on. Yeah. See how power this stuff comes? Yes. You know, thinking through these things gonna help you figure out how did this wall get here? What did this wall built up? You know, you add something else too when you said. You look in the mirror and say, I am ugly. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you're seconding that voice that said that to you in the first place. Right. So yeah. it's just like you took the brick, then you just put another brick on top of it. And every time you've been in that situation, whether it's the mirror, whether it was a relationship, whether it was hanging out with friends, and you had that thought come back through or whatever, guess what you just did? Mm -hmm. Another brick. End up with a big action, you end up with a big cement block. <laughs> is that how it's really is? Wall, yes. Mm -hmm. You end up with a wall. That's right. <laughs> so now when you start talking about dismantling and taking that wall down, you got to see what these elements are. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. if you don't, if you don't grab a hold of that thing, and if you don't start. Well, I, I, I thank God for you for showing me how to walk in my truth, you know, and how to understand my truth. Because until I came here at my age, I was still dealing with that stuff, wow. that kind of stuff. I'd been dealing with it with all those years, you know. And until I started sitting under you and 
learning and, and yeah, I process through some stuff, but some stuff I'm still processing through. And I try not to let that stop me or interfere with anything because God done told me, you're going to be learning until the day that Jesus Christ comes back. You're going to be learning some stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So even if it takes me till then, I refuse to let it, though. Because God is, is he's doing such a work in me right now, you would not believe. Come on. Ugh, and I'm, 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 I process through a lot of stuff. And because of the fact that I, what was that you used? I made it through mm -hmm. that. This stuff that I'm still processing through, I've started processing through. I'm going to make it through that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Can so. Give you one more wealthy. You give you one more wealthy. And, and y'all done just flame up for this. Uh, I, love it. I love it. I always look for a fall guy. Uh, I need to know, so blame me. I'll uh, perfectly all right. One of the things that, 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 that's very important is that you have to take the qualification based thinking out. That's why I talk about it so much. I'm not just talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, to just be talking about it. It's important. See, if you leave the qualification-based thinking in, it adds weight to your process because you're trying to do the process right, wrestling with guilt and shame. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You see, that make it heavy. And I remember when I first started working with my process, I didn't understand all this. <laughs> and I remember laying in the bed crying all night. Wrestling with my guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. Trying to remember and, and revisiting hurting places. Places that I had suppressed and didn't want to revisit. Yeah. Yeah. Know that. How that is. Feeling those feelings. And not only of the event, of the offense, praise God, but feeling those feelings of guilt, shame. Yes. Thinking through how this could have been my fault. Yeah. You see? <laughs> like, yes. and all that's good to think through all that but you don't have to think through it with the pressure of guilt and shame see if you take the qualification out there and replace it with agape love when you were feeling those things had you wrote your first book yet no <laughs> no it was set up it, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. one of the things that took me so long to write the books is even with the knowledge base, even with the information, I'm still dealing with insecurity and inadequacy. Right? At the end of the day, I'm not good enough to write. Yeah. You see? So, having what I had and understanding what I understood, I still didn't understand it well enough to deal with me accurately. Am I making sense? Yeah. The first book came about because we went through a situation back in 2013, uh, an accusation. I wound up spending three weeks in jail mm -hmm. in real life. Uh, uh, when I tell you feeling like I was in a battle that I was unprepared for is an understatement. I was really on some God. I can't believe you that this happened to yeah. me. You know, but I, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I had something bad that he was trying to keep. Yes. I knew that. That's the one thing. And then when I went to prayer, um, and this wasn't immediate. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want y'all to think it was immediate. It wasn't. I went through some, just, some depression and all that kind of stuff and had to fight my way out of it. But, but, but when I was into a, a, a place to really go to God and I went to prayer, I said, God, what was the enemy trying to kill? Because I didn't think I would work this level of a battle. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Number one thing on the on the on the list when I went to God, He says He's trying to cook, kill the books that are in you before wow. you ever get a chance to write. Wow. Right there, I put on everything I love. Right there in that moment, I decided I got to finish the first book. Within three months, it was completely finished. Wow. Within three months, I said, "I mean, He's not killing nothing." Mm -hmm. You you with me? Yeah. I went on. I went in a in a, in a frame of mind where uh, 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 offense. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to move according to the weight of who he fears me to be. Yeah. Wow. You see? 
came out with a vengeance, so to speak. I said, you came back with a vengeance, so to speak. That's warfare. That's warfare. That's warfare. I, and on the front end, I didn't really understand it that on that depth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, that that's what what caused the completion of the first book. You, you feel me? Um, and then after that, it just started coming. You, you feel me? Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we're gonna stop right here. I, uh, I want to talk about strongholds because this walls is li literally a, a imagery of strongholds and how we how we how we will get allow a stronghold to be built and then we will find security behind the stronghold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the reality that we got to deal with. You feel me? But we'll talk more about that next week. Thank you guys so much for joining.